So then let's uh, continue with the class. So you can uh, close all the internet things and open the PPT. So any internet you are using, you can minimize and you know, want to work out with the class. So the last class we talked about some different topics. So. We talked about a uh, number of different topics in the last class, mainly about making an ethics program. So we need to make an documents like the code of conduct and the vision statement. <clears throat> then we need to change the processes. Okay, we talked about process mapping and changing the process to prevent unethical behavior like discrimination or bribery okay so prevent unethical conduct before it occurs by changing the process or adding something to the process okay then we need to have a list of measurable objectives and initiatives and assign responsibility so this is where we finished so a measurable objective Comply with internationally recognized environmental and social standards. Uh, multi, we'll talk about later in the course when we study about corporate social responsibility. But there are some international agreements like uh, on the environment and so on. Okay, And then there's voluntary agreements like the OECD guidelines for multinational enterprises. Okay, And then we have NGOs. For example, there is the International Forestry Organization, IFO. Okay, do you understand forestry? Forestry? Forest? Do you understand forest? Sup? Yes. In Korean? Yeah. Do you like the forest? Yes. Do you go there with your parents? Do you go to the forest with your parents? Yes? Are you very happy when you go to the forest with your parents? Yes? Do you skip all hands with your mommy and daddy on each side? <laughs> Skipping? Okay, yes, there's a lot, there are a lot of forests in Korea, right? So, anyway, for, about the forest, one international standard is if a tree is cut down, we need to plant another tree. Okay, so one tree is cut down, we need to plant another tree. So, we can try to measure this. If our company is cutting down trees or causing trees to be cut down, are we planting trees? Okay, we can measure it. That's just one example. So we can use the internationally recognized standards and try to see that we're keeping the standards or not keeping the standards. Then promote the supplier's compliance with standards. Well, another standard is reporting your CO2. These days most companies report, calculate and report how much CO2 they are emitting in a year. So we need to tell our suppliers, you also need to report about your CO2. Okay, cases of illegal conduct. So we said last year we had five cases of bribery or some problem. So we can measure the number, number of times that there's cases of people doing wrong things. Uh, how much training did the employees get? How many hours training did they take? We can measure that too. Okay. Uh, so, in hiring and promotion, uh, are there, is there any discrimination? We can look at the numbers. Like we said, if 90% of our new employees are male, then maybe there's a problem with discrimination. So, we have to look also at these things we can measure. Make some objective like we're going to hire 60% at least or at least 40% of male or female and then measure at the end of the year okay objective we're going to follow the forestry standard global standard okay measure did we do that at the end of the year so uh, measuring making objectives and measuring if we achieved or not is another way of making sure we're acting eth ethically. 
So then, let's move on to uh, moral philosophy. So, we're just going to briefly introduce moral philosophy here, but we're going to talk the next classes about moral philosophy in more detail, because it's, if you take just general ethics course and not business ethics, they're going to spend a long time talking about moral philosophy, maybe six or seven weeks talking about all the different philosophers, but we're studying business ethics, so we'll just spend one week or two weeks on moral philosophy. But I'll just introduce it here. Moral philosophy is principles that people use to decide what is right or wrong. Okay? Many people use religion to decide what is right or wrong. Okay? Uh, do you know ancient history of Europe, the Greeks and the Romans? Right? Greeks and the Romans, they were, had empires. The Greeks were, had brought in democracy and a lot of things that we, we think about today. We already mentioned Aristotle. But around that time, the moral philosophy of the Greeks was, we're not going to live very long, so let's just do what we want, eat a lot of food, and right, we, they were always at war, the states were always fighting against each other, right? So just kill the people and take the land, okay? And just the strongest one. Do you know the hero? Do you know hero? The concept of hero. Do you like hero movies like Superman? Yes. <clears throat> Do you know that first started with the Greeks, right? The Greeks had plays of the heroes. Have you watched any movie about Troy? Did you watch Troy with Brad Pitt? Yeah. Right? Achilles is the hero. So the Greeks had a lot of plays and stories about heroes. So they thought the best thing is to be strong and, you know, uh, be good in war and be stronger than the other people and then just take what you want okay then the Romans thought very similar the Romans made the armies and they also had the same kind of thinking right we need to protect ourselves and we need to fight and destroy the enemies around us for security and like the Greeks and the Romans had some gods of war right gods of war that kind of thing then we had the Christianity, which was opposite thinking. Okay? Christianity decided you don't have to be strong. You have to be humble. right? Instead of fighting, just be humble. So the Romans didn't really like the Christians at the start because they thought our empire is going to be weak and we are going to fall apart if we allow the Christians to have their way. So the Romans used to persecute, kill a lot of the Christians. They had different moral philosophy, right? Their philosophy didn't agree with the Roman one. So a lot of them were persecuted. But around the 4th century, the emperor, or 3rd century, the emperor of Rome converted to Christianity, right? <coughs> so anyway, just the point is that people have different ideas about how to live in life and what to do, okay? So, we can decide what's right or wrong. So, this is kind of a guideline for, for determining, making decisions and settling com conflicts. Business people also are guided by this in making strategies and resolving ethical issues. No single moral philosophy is accepted by everyone. Okay? People have different moral philosophies. One of these is consequentialist. Do you understand consequences? Consequences? Consequence? So, the main, one of the main ones is what gives the best consequence? The decision which gives the best consequence is the best one. Okay? So something is morally right or acceptable if it produces the desired result. Consequence. What is <coughs> what I want to happen? Such as pleasure, knowledge, career growth, or self-interest. So basically, which is the best, the, which decision which I made, which is the best for me, best result for me? That's the, that's the correct one. On the other hand, the ontology is about rights. This focuses on the rights of individuals. Okay, so this one believes that individuals have certain rights. We have to follow the rules. 
and doing the right thing is more important than doing dealing with doing what gives the best consequence. Okay? So we shouldn't do something because it's wrong. So if we think of a simple example like uh, uh, there is some traffic light, right? Do you understand traffic light? And there's traffic light is just very in the middle of the countryside and there's nobody around. The consequentialist is going to say, well, there's nobody around at all, so I can just go through the light. It's a better consequence for me. Okay, I can get where I'm going quicker. Okay? Mm, this person will say, even though there's nobody around, I can't see anybody in the middle of the countryside, I'm not going to go past the light because it's wrong. It's the wrong thing to do. Okay? So there are the two main ideas. Uh, another moral philosophy is based on your culture. Okay? It's called rel cultural relativism. Bism. So, if we observe the culture and look at the culture of the past, then this is the way to decide on our moral philosophy. What happened in my culture is okay. And every culture is correct. So, in this one has a problem. Different cultures, they can't say which one is better, which one we should follow. Because they think every every person's opinion is as good as another because it's all based on your culture. Uh, we have virtue ethics which Aristotle, we talked about Aristotle. This means that the appropriate appropriate level is uh, what we should do, right? That's Aristotle's idea about moral philosophy. Don't do something too much or don't do something too little. Just do the appropriate amount what is appropriate in a situation? That's a virtue. <coughs> Justice is trying to make just a fair, fair result. Okay? So what's the fairest thing? Do you understand fair? What is the fairest result? Okay? So we're going to talk about this more. We're going to focus on at least the first two in the next weeks. So then, this is what you're going to do for your assignment. This is the steps you need to follow on your assignment, okay? For the midterm. This is your ethical decision-making procedure. So we're putting together what we studied over the last few weeks. Okay, first, gather the facts of the case. So you have the facts of the case written down. When you read any case, you know, some of the facts are important, some of the facts are just background. So identify what is the important fact of your case, okay? Maybe you can highlight or write down what is the important facts. Not everything written in the case is an important fact. Identify all the stakeholders. So maybe written in your case, you have the main stakeholders or actors, but also there may be some stakeholders. It's not written down, but you know they have the stakeholder, okay? So write down the stakeholders. You don't have to make you know, you don't have to make eight stakeholders like everybody, right? And identify the main stakeholders in your case, important ones, okay? <coughs> then write down the claims of the stakeholders. What do the stakeholders want? Okay? So what you can do, you can even make a little box like we saw on the, on the PPT, right? Stakeholder, customers. Okay? What's there? Claim. Okay? And over here we're going to have rights later, okay? So we can make that kind of a box. Okay, what do the customers want? Think about the long and short term consequences of the claims. Then identify obligations to the stakeholders. So rights are obligations. Okay? So we write that there. So we said here that when we're thinking about the obligations, we have to think about any special obligations or fundamental rights are most important. Okay? Is there, in your case, is there fundamental rights? Okay, so we write down the stakeholders' rights and the stakeholders' claims. Then, we consider our own character and integrity. So, we think of, also think about our own moral philosophy. What's our moral philosophy? Then, think creatively about potential action. So, what solution? We have to make a decision. 
Okay? You have to make a decision. It's up to you to, to make a concrete decision. You're not going to say, well, we could do this or we could do that, but I'm not really sure, right? If you're working in the job, you're the responsible person, you have to make a decision. Do you understand? So you are deciding what's going to happen in your case. Okay? So you have to think creatively about different things you can do and then decide on one. And then you need to make an argument that supports your decision. So an argument is a set of premises or statements that logically lead to a conclusion. So after you decide what you're going to do, you write down what you think is the right thing to do or should be done. Then you make your argument. Okay? So you're going to write your argument should be of at least three paragraphs. Okay? Two or three paragraphs which explains why you made this decision logically. So we're going to look at an example of an argument. Here's an example of an argument. Forcing employees to stand at their workstation for over 12 hours without a break is consistent with the accepted definitions of torture. The right not to be tortured is a fundamental human right. Okay? Do you understand logic? This is logic. Okay? We're making an argument with logic. We're not saying, we don't make our argument just, it's terrible, we should never ask employees to stand up for 12 hours, right? I think that's terrible. That's not an argument, that's just, you're just saying it's bad, right? An argument is you're using facts and logic. Okay? So this uses facts. This is torture. And torture is a fundamental human right. Okay? Not to be tortured. So therefore, we're not going to do that. So, do you think you can do that? You can make an argument over one, why you chose your, why you chose one decision? Yeah? You look back at your facts, the rights and obligations of your, uh, look at the claims, look at the long-term value for the company. We have to consider what's good for the long-term value of the company. Okay? Then make an argument. This is why we chose this decision, because of this logical reason. So do you have any questions about that? On your assignment, we can see the same, very similar setup, right? So we have here your midterm assignment, and on the document here, we can see that it's written out. So you can write, it actually helps, it's more organized if you write the number, right? You identify the stakeholders, right? What is good for society, for stakeholders? Okay, so what's good? What's their claim? Okay, what was good for all of them? What do they all want? Okay, can we develop the stakeholders' capabilities? So we can follow these steps. Okay, if they're not relevant, we, might, we don't have to include, but it may be relevant. What is the right thing to do? What would a virtuous person do? So, what virtues are relevant to the case? You know, what's your moral philosophy? And then what do you conclude should be done in the case? Okay? Make some data or evidence to support your, your argument. Explain the moral principle that supports your conclusion. Okay? So, <coughs> this is the document, right? So, those are the steps we should take when we're making an ethical decision. In the real life too, not just for our assignment. Okay? When we have to make a big decision, Consider all the stakeholders, all their claims. Think about the long and short term consequences. Think about their rights. Think creatively and make an argument to support your decision. Okay? So that's decision, ethical decision making. Important part of the course. Okay? Do you have any question about that? Do you think you could follow those steps in the real life if you have to make an ethical decision? Do you think it helps writing down the stakeholders and what they want and their rights? Does that help to make a decision? Hmm? Some people when they make a decision they make a very simple list, right? Pros and cons. Do you know pros and cons? Yeah. Pros and cons is a very simple way, right? What, what's the positive point of making this decision? What's the negative point? But this one is more detailed. Okay, what's the positive point? 
for all the stakeholders, okay? Which is better, balancing the interests over the long term for the, for the company. And we're also thinking about their rights. So then, uh, we should also do some continual improvement. Continual improvement means just we always want to get better. We always want to improve. So, we could start with just recycling, okay? But we keep improving, improving, and in the end we can become a sustainable company, okay? We're doing everything right for the environment. Uh, we have to be honest with ourselves and have critical self-reflection. And we want to be committed to eliminating what causes the unethical behavior. So like we said, finding out, asking five whys, for example. And act on the processes. Keep trying to improve the process. Okay? We improved the process last year about discrimination. But maybe we can improve the process again this year, even more. <coughs> Do you understand audit? Audit means, we see audit in accountancy. It means somebody is checking up, checking your work again. So we can get an audit from outside, an outside company. They can come to our company and audit and say, have a look and see, right? Are you doing the things properly or not? We can have an anonymous stakeholder feedback system. So for example, ethics hotlines. Why is it anonymous? Do you understand anonymous? <coughs> what does anonymous mean? Don't say their names. Why is it anonymous? Why would we make it anonymous? For example, our employees. Why would they be not why would we want them to be anonymous? They're giving us some feedback about our ethic. Yes, right? Have you ever heard of whistleblower? Whistleblower? What's a whistleblower? People who tell about the bad behavior in the company, right? The problem is sometimes whistleblowers get fired or they can't get promotion, okay? Or even the other company might not want to hire them, okay? Because they blew the whistle on the other company. In Ireland, there was a famous case of a whistleblower in the police. So, do you know speeding tickets? Speeding tickets, right? The police had the speeding ticket on the computer system. So the police in Ireland were deleting the speeding tickets for some important people or their contact, right? Their family members or that kind of thing. So some whistleblower uh, told the media, he told, first of all he told his bosses and they didn't do anything. Then he told the media. And then he got demoted. Do you understand demoted? Not promoted, put down to the lower job, right? So then, there was a big scandal in the country and went all the way to the top and the top of the police had to resign. And actually the Minister for Justice had to resign too. Do you understand Minister for Justice? How do you say Minister for Justice? How do you say Minister? Hmm? <laughs> Can you say that again? Bambu Bojangwan. Okay, so the Minister for Justice also lost his job. Okay, because uh, of that problem. And then actually they put a woman as the new chief of police. Maybe they thought the problem was some old boys network, right? Just the men are like, ah, just, it's okay, just delete the speeding fine, right? But the woman can come in. What are you doing? Don't! That's not okay. Right? Don't do that. So they made a woman at the top of the police in Ireland now, okay? So the point was that the whistleblower got demoted and they had a lot of problems. And uh, now they're reinstated, but still it was a lot of stress and a lot of problems. So if we can make it anonymous, like we have a system, like a hotline, you understand the hotline? So people can call up and explain about things, then we can investigate. 
they, they are more likely to come forward. Okay, we implement a system of corrective action. When we have a problem, we ask five whys. Why did the problem happen? Why did this happen? Why did that happen? Okay, so in Ireland, they probably asked the five whys. And it kept going up and up to the chief of police and up to the minister of justice. So that's why they all had to lose their jobs, right? Why, why was this happening? Oh, because this person didn't do this. And why? Because this person doesn't care about this, okay? Then we need to change the things. Uh, so, for example, in purchasing, do you understand kickback? In Brazil, that's the problem for the president of Brazil at the moment, and the ex-president, and many of the politicians. Uh, Petrobras, the big oil company in Brazil, gave a lot of contracts to people. And they are accused of receiving kickbacks. It means, you're, you want to get the contract from Petrobras, okay? So I ask you, okay, pay me one million dollars and you, your company gets the contract, okay? Contract is worth 50 million or 60 million, right? Are you going to pay me? Your company can get the contract, 60 million, you're going to be rich and your company will have business for the next five years. Just pay me one million into my bank account. You've got the contract. What? <laughs> no, of course not. I was trying to make it sound good, but that's illegal. And the problem is you're going to get caught. Maybe you have a lot of money and a nice house for a few years. But five years later, like happened in Brazil, it comes out and you get caught and the politicians get caught. Okay? You go to jail. Do you want to do it now? No. No? Change your mind? Okay, maybe you can get the contract anyway, or you can get another contract. It's not worth going to jail. So that's kickbacks. So if we ask, why did the kickback get taken? And then we, we could find out that actually, we already made the system of two people, right? So it's very hard to figure out why the kickbacks. And what we could find out at the end is that just we were hiring the wrong people, okay? When we were hiring people, we weren't hiring honest people. We weren't checking properly that they were honest. So we could actually figure out, we need to change our hiring and evaluation process, okay? Maybe we need to check the references. Do you understand the references? Check the references of the people better before we hire them, okay? Especially the people who work in purchasing. Do you understand purchasing? Purchasing? I heard that some companies use a system where they put very rich people in purchasing. People from rich families who don't need the money. Put them working in purchasing. So they don't have to take a bribe. Do you understand that idea? Hmm? Let's say his family is really rich. Then put him working in purchasing. Right? He's not going to take any bribe. He already has a lot of money. But that's not a good solution. <laughs> right? Just some companies do like that. Right? But, I'm not suggesting to do that, right? That's a bad idea. But, uh, we can make some system, systematic changes to the hiring to find people more honest who's not going to take the kickbacks when we're hiring them. Okay, then uh, we get some review of the ethic programs by the top managers. Uh, we have, we're going to talk about later, this Global Reporting Initiative by the UN. It's a framework for reporting our economic, social and environmental issues. So the managers can check against this using this kind of framework. We'll talk about more in, in another class. Do you have any question about uh, continual improvement? So continual improvement is important. We also need to make sure we have a system or a process that we're, means that we improve all the time. This is not just for ethics, this is management, okay? For any company, we should have a continual improvement system with audits and, you know, corrective action system, anonymous feedback system, that works for a lot of things, okay? So, <coughs> then let's just mention leadership. So we have all of these things like we need to do, okay? Like educate our employees about becoming ethical, making our, uh, changing our processes, having continual improvement. But 
we need leadership from the top of the organization. So we have the CEO, and we also are going to have, we should have an ethics officer working in the company. And these people have to show leadership to encourage the other people to do it. Okay, in the real life, leadership is very important because if, you don't, if you're not a good leader and you don't lead people properly, then they just don't do it and it doesn't work. Okay? So, uh, if we think of some examples of leaders, we can look at the history. Again, if we look at the Roman history, uh, the Romans were uh, living in Italy, okay? And they were getting attacked by a lot of other people, especially the Carthaginians. The Carthaginians was from North Africa. And the Carthaginians had a navy. Navy is a lot of ships for fighting. So here was Africa, North Africa. Carthaginia doesn't exist anymore, right? Italy. Italy looks like a boot, a boot right? My, my art is very good. <laughs> okay, as you can see. This, do you know Sicily? Sicily is famous for the mafia these days. But anyway, Carthaginia controlled the Sicily. And they were all the ports. They were attacking Italy. So, Italian general called uh, Gaius. Gaius told the Romans, we have to make a navy and defeat the Carthaginian navy at sea. Otherwise, Rome will never, will always be in trouble. Will always be getting attacked. So this was the start of the Roman Empire. So they told them, you're crazy. Carthaginia for 500 years controls the sea. They have the best navy in the world. Do you understand navy? Navy, this she is for battle. But the Romans never, they didn't do anything on the sea, only on land. And the Roman warriors didn't know how to fight at sea. They only knew how to fight on land. Okay? So Gaius told them, in six months, we are going to defeat the Carthaginians in the navy battle. So all of the Roman senators and politicians started laughing at him, like, how are you crazy? How are we going to, we'll never beat them in the navy. And you said we could do that in six months, right? But then Gaius showed a very good leadership, okay? He convinced all the people that they were able to do that. And he got everybody to join in his vision. His vi he had the clear vision of defeating Carthaginia after six months, okay? And he encouraged all the people. First they thought he was crazy. Okay? But after a while he encouraged them and they joined his vision together. And they cut down a lot of trees. And they captured one Carthaginian ship. And they copied the ship. Right? They copied the ship and they made some innovation. The innovation was on the ship they made some thing like this. Which is going to go onto the other ship. And then all the soldiers can come across and fight, like land war, on the ships. Okay, so they made that kind of innovation. And then they trained for, in secret for months on the land. So they were just, the guys were just rowing, like this. Right? On the, just sitting on the ground, just rowing. So the people walking by thought they were all crazy. Right? But they were practicing the rowing. So, uh, just... He had the excellent leadership of the vision, being very positive, getting everybody to join his plan. Okay? And then they attacked the, the Carthaginians and they won. They won the battle. They went into Carthaginia and they defeated the Carthaginia on land. And then Rome started to be a big empire. So that's why a lot of the other emperors in Rome their name was Gaius, always put Gaius in their name, like Gaius Julius Caesar, right? They copied that guy, because it was kind of an incredible feat, right? The same for the moon landing. The US got on JF JFK, you know JFK? Very similar story. John F. Kennedy made the vision, we're going to get to the moon, land on the moon. So everybody's laughing at him, right? But he gets all the people together to join his vision and makes them believe, okay, and encourage them. And with the groups working together, they were able to achieve that. So leadership 
we can see a lot of examples of leadership in the history. And we can also see the examples of bad leadership, right? Uh, one of the things that Gaius did that was very good is he went around all the troops, all the military guys, and he knew their name, right? And they felt they were part, everybody was doing this together. They felt they were part of everybody doing it together. But some other military leader, they just were very high position and didn't talk to anybody, right? And they just had their own idea and didn't encourage the people, just told them, just do this, right? Then just the people didn't follow them. The soldiers didn't want to fight for them. They didn't try hard or they ran away and it was failure, right? So just the point is that we need the right kind of leadership in the company to make all the people, encourage them, to make them follow and make a good ethical company. Okay? Then they want to make the ethical company and the group of people working together can achieve uh, great things. right? So we'll discuss a little bit more about that in the next class, but uh, let's finish there for today. Just uh, we can think about, maybe you can think about some leader that you like, okay, or you know about. We'll discuss in the next class.